Coming up, the bass are chasing the perch on a shipwreck in Lake Champlain. Join the Blue World team on a fascinating dive into history. Welcome to Jonathan Bird's Blue World. Lake Champlain, comprising almost 500 square miles, is the 13th largest lake in the United States. It's a boater's paradise. But the lake is large enough that storms have sunk hundreds of vessels over the years, making it a popular scuba diving destination too. Lake Champlain spans the border between Vermont and New York State and stretches up into Canada. In colonial times, the lake was used as a water highway between the St. Lawrence and Hudson Valleys. But because it also provided direct access from British-controlled Canada, it was of strategic importance to colonial America, both to defend borders and for trade. As the area became more settled, a certain type of vessel called a canal schooner became the standard for hauling cargo to the area. Today, I'm heading to beautiful Burlington, Vermont with Zach of all trades, cameraman Zach, and Annalise, our new assistant diver. We arrive at Waterfront Diving Center, the local dive experts. And apparently we're early. Eventually, owner Jonathan Eddy lets us in, and we meet our dive master, Sheila Cooley. Next, we unpack all our gear. Not a huge boat, so it's easier to set our gear up at the shop. The boat is a few hundred meters away, so we load our gear in the shop truck. Of course, there's always some paperwork. And then it's time for a dive briefing on today's adventure. All right, so two dives uh, is the plan. So the O.G. Walker and the General Butler, these are uh, historical sailing canal barge boats. Then we don our dry suits and walk on down to the boat. Sheila brings the gear. Front, Captain Larry has brought what looks like a World War II landing craft right up on the boat ramp. This comfortable vessel will be our diving platform for the next three days. It's a bit overcast and windy, but the breakwater protects the marina from the lake waves. Outside the breakwater, waves are crashing on the bow and splashing us, so it's time to finish suiting up. Oh yeah, I am so fashionable. With the landing craft style front gate down, it's an easy giant stride entry. Or something like that. Like most lakes, Champlain is not exactly known for crystal clear water, but during the summer, the surface is quite warm. 
It's over 70 degrees, and I'm wondering why I brought a dry suit. But 65 feet down at the mooring, it's quite a bit colder, 45 degrees, and I'm glad for the dry suit. We follow the guideline from the mooring to the wreck of the O.J. Walker. The O.J. Walker is a historically significant wreck that's part of the Lake Champlain Underwater Historic Preserve. The wreck is covered in zebra mussels. These invasive mollusks coat much of the wreck, including the bow. There's a dead eye on the bow, shimmering in the thermocline. There's also an anchor on the bow, a bit camouflaged in zebra mussels. This canal schooner sank during a severe storm in the spring of 1895, so it doesn't look too bad at all for a 125-year-old wooden vessel. The holds are filled with a century's worth of silt. Swimming down the wreck, we reach one of the masts, damaged but still in place. There's a sign reminding divers that as part of the underwater historic preserve, divers are not allowed to penetrate the wreck because it's so fragile. I'm swimming along a spectacular piece of American history as I make my way back to the most famous part of the wreck. Hey everybody, have you subscribed? You know we only put out like one episode a month, so you're not gonna get a lot of notifications from us. So just hit the button. The ship's wheel is still upright. It's missing a few pieces, but still looks like it could steer the boat. And the wheel was connected to the rudder, which is in good shape, planted into the mud. The O.J. Walker had a working career of 33 years hauling heavy cargoes. When she sank, she had a load of bricks and ceramics, which can still be seen on the wreck. Supplies can be transported by water from New York City all the way to Lake Champlain via a system of locks that connect Champlain to the Hudson River. When a river has a large elevation change, the result is either a waterfall or a section of rapids, neither of which is possible to navigate in a large boat. To get around that, you can build a system of locks, which basically creates an elevator for boats. By controlling the water level in the locks, you can raise boats to sail upstream or lower them to sail downstream. Between the Hudson River and Lake Champlain, there are currently 13 different locks, each with an elevation change of between 4 and 6 meters, allowing boats to make the journey. Requiring very little power, in the 1800s, this was by far the most efficient way to move large quantities of materials to and from New York. There's a practical limit on how large a lock can be, and that limit dictates the size of the boat. The original lock system was completed in 1823 and enlarged in 1862. It could accommodate boats about 88 feet long and 14 feet wide, so that was how large the canal boats were. At the Lake Champlain Maritime Museum, we check out the Lois McClure, a reproduction of a period canal schooner. Canal schooners were sail-rigged boats that could travel across the lake on wind power then lower the sails, pull up the centerboard, and go through the locks being towed by horses from shore. Over the years, canal schooners developed a very specific design for this very specific task. And underwater on the wreck, we can see that design clearly. There are windows in the stern. This section of the boat was the crew quarters. 
Like many canal vessels, it was both a work boat and a home. One of the O.J. Walker's captains lived on board with his family for over nine years. After a 45-minute dive, it's time to head back to the surface. We ascend slowly and do a safety decompression stop, and it feels good to rise back into the warmth of the surface waters. Back at the museum, we meet Chris Sabick, the director of archaeology and research. Even though the museum is closed during COVID, we get a private tour. Inside, we see an exhibit on the O.J. Walker. We also see an exhibit on the next wreck we're going to dive, the General Butler. This exhibit includes a large collection of artifacts from the wreck. In the winter of 1876, a powerful storm hit the General Butler as the crew was attempting to get her to the safety of the harbor. The steering linkage broke, uh -oh. and the wind blew the boat right into the breakwater, so close to the harbor. The captain and crew managed to jump off the boat onto the breakwater before she sank. The next day, the weather has turned rainy, but the wind is down. We're gonna get wet anyway, so a little rain won't hurt us. Woo! Woo! Yeah, woo! We sink down the mooring line to only 40 feet because the general butler is so shallow right off the breakwater. The wreck is also part of the historic preserve. Being so shallow, the zebra mussels are even more numerous in the warm water. But the fish seem to love the warm, shallow water, too. There's a huge school of perch. Sheila shows me the giant hole in the hull where the boat hit the breakwater. As a classic canal schooner, the butler has the same basic stern design as the O.J. Walker. As Sheila and I head back towards the bow, we're surrounded by fish. And while it's not unusual to see large numbers of fish aggregate around wrecks in the ocean, I can't remember ever seeing this many fish on a freshwater wreck. The perch are being chased by bass. Guys, this is a historical wreck. You're not allowed to go in there.
finally, Sheila leads us back to the mooring line to head back to the surface. <laughs> Diving the canal schooners of Lake Champlain was great fun and a fascinating look into American history. I never expected diving in a lake to offer so much excitement. There are dozens of wrecks in Lake Champlain, and we filmed several of them. So stay tuned for more Lake Champlain adventures in the Blue World. Hey everyone, have you subscribed to our extras channel, Blue World Plus? It's full of great behind the scenes and additional fun content. Check it out now.